What's up everyone, Mark here. It is a very cold and cloudy afternoon, but I have some exciting topics to talk about. Specifically, where should you publish your apps? Where are you gonna get the most downloads, the most money right now in 2018? Um, a lot of us, when we start out with our app idea, we, we don't know if we should publish for Apple, if we should publish for, for Android, uh, if we should do both. So I'm gonna answer that question for you today and uh, you can decide where the best place is to get your, your app uh, published. So let's start off with uh, Apple versus Android. I've developed over 2,500 apps and I've had the fortune of uh, having those on three major networks. Those networks are Apple, Google Play, and the Amazon App Store. Um, and when I think about publishing my apps, the first two questions I always ask myself are, what type of device are my customers using? And how are they finding apps? Now luckily there are a few very simple easy ways for us to answer these questions. The first is Facebook Audience Insights. Facebook Audience Insights is free and as you know a majority of people in the world have a Facebook account so it is a large uh, database of data that we can, we can tap into and Facebook Audience Insights is completely free and it lets us know more about our user including where they are, uh, what type of interest they have, and even what type of device and operating system they use. If our, if our user is an Android user, or if they are an Apple user, if they're a desktop user, if they're a mobile user, and we can take that data to the consideration when deciding if we should publish on the Android or Apple store. Um, now, if your Facebook Audience Insights data is inconclusive or you choose to use a different form of information, um, another one I use are Google Forms. Google Forms are free. You can create a form that basically just says multiple choice. Do you use Apple device? Do you use an Android device? And you can collect data that way. I've done this by sending these forms and email lists. Um, I've posted them in social, social groups. I've uh, done ads where people uh, click on the, on the ad and fill out the form. All sorts of ways that I collect information to figure out what type of device my audience is using before I de develop the app. And the last thing that you can do is ask your competition. Ask people who are already developing apps for these customers or in the same area, whether it be puzzles or games or people who are into surfing or whatever topic you're at. Ask your competition. You'll be surprised by the response that you get. Most people won't respond, but the ones that you do um, have just a wealth of information and knowledge that they can share with you. So those are the four ways to figure out what type of device your users have and even how people find apps. And once you know that, that information, you're off to the races and you'll have a very clear idea whether you should publish for the Apple or Google Play Store. Next, um, I always recommend starting with Apple. So if your data is inconclusive or if you just have a generic app you're looking to get out there, if it's your first project, always start with Apple. And the reason being that you will make more money with Apple. Apple is making almost uh, twice as much money right now as the Google Play Store. So it is the place where all of the cash is coming in. And um, it's also, number two is it's also more intuitive and accessible for, for us as developers. The developer dashboard on the back where we manage our projects, where we manage our accounts, where we manage our apps, it's a lot more intuitive. It's a lot more set up and organized rather than other platforms. And there's also a lot more knowledge accessible for us. So there's a lot more forums, there's a lot more help by Apple than there are other platforms. So if you have a problem, you can go into a help group, you can go into the knowledge center of Apple, you can even hop on the phone with Apple and talk to a real person and get the answers that you're looking for. It just makes it just for a little bit easier of an experience than other platforms. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is planning your app's growth. So just because you have an app that's successful in one platform, um, people get afraid. They get afraid to branch out. They get afraid to try uh, developing for other platforms, for taking their Apple app and going into Android. And it is a scary process, and every time that I do it, I'm scared too because we're so, uh, we feel so safe in the environment that we're currently in. So in Apple, we're used to seeing our, our daily revenue and having that number come in, and it's very safe for us. And it's and it's scary to realize and have to make an investment into an outside platform, into something that's new. And that's something that we all deal with. Um, it doesn't go away. You just need to do it. But we have to be safe about our investments too. So um, we want to try new, new opportunities, but it's also a question of when. When is the right time that we can jump into these new opportunities and grow our business and our apps? So a couple of ways to figure this out is first, make sure your app is ROI positive. Uh, a lot of times when I'm creating a project, I'll start with Apple, and Apple is my test market, 
right? And once I start to see a profit and start building that app and I have my MVP and it is a proven uh, demand for my app, then we start building into um, other platforms and other markets. So make sure that you are ROI, ROI positive first, you've made your money back, and there's a clear sign that you're going to be making more and more money. Uh, secondly, make sure there is a demand for your app on the new platform. So in 100% of the cases when I take my app cross-platform, it's because people are messaging me. There's a demand. They're hitting me up on my email. They're emailing support. They're messaging us on social media. And they're asking us, when is the Android version coming out? If you don't have people messaging you, if they're not asking you about uh, taking your app cross-platform and making it, making it accessible for Samsung devices or for LG devices or for whatever they have, then don't do it. People will let you know when the time is right and you'll feel that momentum kind of building as you go and as you have uh, your app where it's supposed to be. Uh, the next thing is make sure you have exportable systems in place. And this is kind of more of like an exit move thing, right? So we want to make sure that so many, so many times we create a project or a business and we realize, you know, down the road that we, we don't have any structure to our business. We don't have any structure to our project. And um, it just makes things so much easier to have this master guide ready to go so that not only you, but anybody can figure out how to take these systems and help you scale. And the last thing you want to do is uh, make sure you devote yourself and stay motivated with your growth plan. So just because it makes sense to do something, if it makes sense to go cross-platform and develop for Android, don't do it unless you're excited about it. Don't do it unless you have an Android device, unless you're in there, unless you understand and are excited about this new platform. Um, that means going into the Android uh, platform and checking reviews, responding to people, and being just as motivated and devoted to your project on maybe an Apple platform as you are on Android. Again, our end goal is not just making the user's experience as best as possible, but making our experience as best as possible by being just completely excited about what we're working on and delivering the best experience for everyone, including ourselves. So make sure that you are excited and that you are going to devote yourself to, uh, to this new investment. And as always, uh, stay focused on the money. So the money and the motivation should be what, what drives your projects. Don't do something, uh, don't grow this app unless you have proof that it's going to enhance either your product, your brand, or bring in money. And I also included the 10% rule. This is a rule that I, I personally use on my projects. And it's a very simple way of just kind of giving you an idea if it's worth it for you to take your project cross-platform or not. And here's how it works, step one you get the total revenue that your app is bringing in. So if your app brings in $1,000 a month, that's your total revenue. And then you calculate 10%, okay? So what's 10% of that? Okay, it's gonna be $10, or I'm sorry, $100. And then we get the development costs to take that project cross-platform. So if it's gonna cost us $300 to take our project cross-platform, and I can say, okay, this is gonna bring in about $100 a month, that's a pretty good investment. I'm gonna recoup my investment in about three months from just uh, the 10% rule. Um, so this isn't always true. Sometimes it's gonna be 5% total increase. Sometimes it'll be 50% total increase. We don't really know. But the 10% rule gives you a good idea of just being safe with your investments and knowing whether this is something that you should move forward with or maybe wait until you're a little bit more dialed and sure uh, that it's gonna be a good time to take your, your product cross-platform. Um, in most cases, my apps that I, I, I start with Apple in most cases, when I when I port them to Android, I see a 20% overall revenue increase. And that is a huge benefit to me. 20% to me is a lot of money. I'm happy to see that 20% extra revenue every at the end of every month. Um, but I do use this 10% rule as a foundation to decide whether scaling my business is worth it or not. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys, this was able to help you guys out a lot. If you have any questions, please post them. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel here and uh, wish you the best and that you uh, see some extra revenue.